Good morning. We are back at Treetop Lodge for episode 54 of Connie's Kitchen. Joe's back. And he's going to take the lead on cooking today. And I, well, first I have to show you. I'm, doesn't my hair look great? Amy did such a nice job. The other night she was massaging my scalp, and I had a big knot in my neck. And, uh, boy, when that knot let loose, well, she said I made some pretty unusual noises. <laughs> so. I didn't think this was that kind of show. I didn't think so either, but okay. I guess the other people in the shop that I was not aware of found it quite entertaining. So, anyway, do your thing. Okay. Well, I'm happy to be back. Thanks very much. Uh, today, uh, we're going to make meatloaf muffins. Uh, very convenient for a single person, uh, a family where you can do portion control, a lot of fun for the kids, so get them in the kitchen to help you with this. Uh, we are going to have a uh, potato salad uh, made in the microwave. Again, that's uh, good for, for getting stuff done quickly. And uh, we're going to toss a little mixed green salad with a little different salad dressing. So, my assistant here. There you go. Okay. We've got a, a, into, the bowl. a into the bowl, please. We've got a pound of ground chuck. Yep. Ground chuck. I like the flavor of ground chuck. A little bit of fat gives it a little yeah, more just flavor. A little um, you can use a, a ground round, of course. Uh, I'd stay away from ground sirloin because you want a little fat to give it some flavor. Yeah. Um, don't go with hamburger. That you don't know what the fat mix is and yeah. what else. Now they're pretty good about marking those, though. Yes, yes, they are. They've gotten yeah. better. Yeah. I'm still adamant. Can we break that? Okay, yes, please. Do you want and the whole egg or just the yolk? Uh, the whole egg. We're going to put put one egg in with a pound of ground ground beef, and we'll mix panko breadcrumbs, which is pretty standard in just about any kind of. Uh, in here? Yes, please. Just about any kind of meatloaf, whether it's in a bread pan, loaf pan, uh, it's a free form, or as we're doing today, meatloaf muffins. Well, this started with, um, this I was talking about doing, instead of a whole meatloaf, because I can't put the whole meatloaf on the shelf, make a meatloaf, slice it, and pan fry it. Then Joe came up with the idea of doing it in muffin tins, which I think is a great idea. So. Mm, crud. Allow me. I'm so glad Connie is here in the kitchen with me. <laughs> Wait, didn't we talk about changing it to Joe's kitchen? is I will transfer them out of the couch into a plastic container. That was a no, so. by the way. <laughs> well, no. it's Joe's kitchen today. <laughs> okay, we're going to, this is precise, so pay attention. Mm -hmm. Exact measurement is very important. I always say that. You don't want it a bread loaf with a little bit of meat flavoring. You want it uh, just to have the uh, enough bread crumbs. Uh, you could use uh, panko, as we are here, a standard bread crumb. You could use a seasoned if you want, but I like adding seasonings afterwards. Uh, you can uh, ground up, grind up some. Uh, you mix it up. I'll put stuff in. Okay. Sounds good. Now, these are for the, so leave the seasoning behind you that you want to use? Uh, no, they're right, o right over, I don't know. These two? No, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, I haven't picked the, the meat seasonings yet. What uh, we are going to do, what Connie is going to do now, so I can finish my, my thought on what else you can use instead of uh, breadcrumbs, <laughs> is she's going to open a, 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 a wedge of cheese and she's going to shred that up a little bit. We're going to add some cheese into this, uh, give it a little creaminess, make it a lot of fun. This is, believe it or not, Parmesan peppermint. Cheese. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Welcome to our Christmas special. I just found these on, they were on clearance, and they were all still fresh, and he brought one home, and I got to tell you, that tasted so good, I said, I'm taking this up to the lodge, so he, but he bought, you know, bought a bunch of the lodge, so, how much do you need? Um, you know, just kind of enough. <laughs> you want a measurement from me? <laughs> I got, oh, there you go. I'm, oh, that, oh, wow. Isn't that nice? That's different. Uh, the peppermint seems to be in the rind. Yep. Yes, it is, and it's it's not when you think peppermint, you think of what the candy cane you hang on the tree. That's right. Um, not like that. It's just a, a very nice, fresh peppermint kind of flavor. More. Oh, that no, that's that's perfect. I don't want. Of course that. it is. <laughs> now, see, I thought you were going to put the cheese in the potatoes. No, 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 no. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, so I'm just going to bring that in. Oh, so the other things you can use instead of breadcrumbs. You can uh, uh, rich crackers or rich cracker type or saltine type. I wouldn't use a wheat type cracker. Um, 
corn flakes. Like yes, that's good. Corn if you're my age, you can use bran flakes. What else do you want? Uh, or you can use Doritos if it's something fun for the kids. Mm -hmm. Any sort of flavored Doritos or corn chips. Um, let's let's put some uh, some herbages in there. Now that's that was for the potatoes, uh, but we can put those in there. Let's grab something there. Oh, the sandwich sprinkle would be great. Mm -hmm. It smells so good. So just yeah. Say what? Whatever you think is good. This is one of those uh, pre-mixed uh, seasoning jars. Um, this is Penzi's, but there's all sorts of different types out there. Grab what you like. A lot of people use uh, a bag of uh, onion soup mix, which is also used in dips, which yeah, is fine. Yeah, really watch your salt level on yeah. onion soup. Yeah, so I don't use that. Um, and last episode, episode 46, the last one I was in, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I extolled uh, Connie's virtue that she she looks for mixed seasoning packets on the dip racks and, mm -hmm. and in that aisle in the grocery store. So well, that's a great way to have six different herbs and not have to buy six different jars of herbs. You know, especially if there's something new you want to try, it's a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's good for dip too, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm told. Oh yeah. Or okay. like in cream cheese. So you're just going to make a, you're just going to smash it in. How are you going to do this? Okay. Well. You sprayed the pan first. Yes. Sprayed the pan. Pardon my reach. That's okay. Um, avoid the little mini muffin pans. Those uh, won't work so well. Although it would... Wood for hors d'oeuvres. For or, uh, There you go. This is why it is Connie's kitchen, I'm afraid to say. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I don't have quite enough for six muffins. So make two of them a little bit bigger. That's right. <laughs> so we don't waste. All right. We're going to get these into the pan and into the oven. Yep. And when we get back, we'll start on the potatoes. We will. Okay. Um, size of a billiard ball, just right in. Do you want me to smash it? No, no, no. You can, you can just leave okay. it like that. We'll be back in a few. We'll get them in the pan. Yep. Oh, so I don't have to smash them? No. You didn't put any onions in. do anything for kids. Yet one in six children in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Help end childhood hunger near you. Learn how at feedingamerica.org. We serve America and its veterans. We pledge ourselves to our veterans, our youth, a strong national defense, and Americanism. These four pillars shape our work and what we do for America. There is power in our numbers. We're the largest organization of wartime veterans in the nation. We are two and a half million members strong, men and women from every state in the nation and around the world. No other veterans organization wields this kind of power. We work relentlessly within our four pillars of service, and we succeed. The American Legion takes care of our fellow veterans and their families. We maintain close ties with Congress and the leaders in Washington, D.C. They respect us. They listen to us. We sponsor research and press for medical care and benefits for all veterans and active duty service members, whether they are members of the American Legion or not. President Roosevelt signs G.I. Joe's Bill of Rights. You've heard of the G.I. Bill of Rights, one of the most important pieces of social legislation of the 20th century. It was written and passed largely through the efforts of the American Legion. We were instrumental in the formation of what is now the Department of Veterans Affairs to make sure our veterans get the care and benefits they are promised and deserve. The young people of our nation are our future. They benefit from exceptional programs and generous scholarships that only the American Legion offers. 
We provide athletic programs like American Legion Junior Shooting Sports, Legion Baseball, and educational and civics programs like the Oratorical Scholarship Contest and Boys State and Boys Nation. As Supreme Court Justice Hugo Black stated, the quality of justice that Americans receive should not depend upon the amount of money they have. We promote citizenship and an appreciation of government. We have all been directly involved in our nation's defense as wartime veterans. We know what policies, tools, and manpower our military needs to protect this great country. We fight to get these things done. We're all very grateful to have the American Legion on point. We take our case all the way to the top in Washington, D.C. to ensure that America is prepared for any threat. We are patriots through and through. We believe in our flag and all that it stands for. Our Constitution, our Pledge of Allegiance, our way of life are all fundamental to maintaining our freedom and the standing that we have as the greatest country on earth. We promote and defend these values every day in communities across the nation. These pillars represent not just what we do, but who we are. We're here to serve our fellow veterans, their families, and all of America. We are here for them. We are here for you. The American Legion asks you to join us in our mission. If you share our vision and commitment to America, visit our website at legion.org or your nearest American Legion post today. Hi, we're back. The meatloaf, or the meat, mini meatloaf balls. Meatloaf muffins. Meatloaf muffins. They are in the oven. And I am doing your favorite thing. I'm chopping. Don't we love it when Connie chops? What are you doing with the garlic there? Well, um, I'm peeling a, a single little clove of garlic. Um, my mom was German, and when she made her, uh, her potato salad, she would always take a clove of garlic, cut it in half, and rub the bowl with it. So there's a slight flavor of garlic to it, but it won't overpower the potatoes. If your mom did that and she was German, was she making German potato salad? Yeah. It was good. It was good. Okay. I always thought she cut it in half to get a, a, a fresh uh, 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 end, and then she would just rub, rub it right in there. Very cool. Oh, Something good. I have not done. It's very cool. Now, do you leave the garlic in there, or are you just leaving the essence? No, nope, just the essence. Oh, it smells good. Something else that we'll do as well that'll help to bring that garlic flavor into the, uh, into the potato salad a little bit. I love so, potato salad. Of course, I love potatoes. Some of the stuff that we're doing saves a lot of time. Yeah, you said you're going to cook this in the microwave. Yes, yes. The potatoes will be cut up. Uh, they'll be put into a bowl, the bowl we prepared with the garlic clove. Um, and then I add a little bit of cider vinegar, or any type of vinegar, really, and then toss it. The potatoes will, actually, no, I do that after it's cooked. Okay. Because the warm potato will just suck the vinegar right into it and flavor it even more. Oh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta dress the potatoes when they're hot. My mom used to always cook them with the skin on and then peel them while they were hot. I mean, yes. such words. Yes. It would come out of her mouth. But she yeah. said it was for that reason, because you have to dress it when it's hot. I just, so she would cook them whole. So I just skip that step altogether, leave the skin on, but I dice them up. So you get the same effect as here. Now, in the saving time category, we are making meatloaf muffins. The smaller uh, size will help it to cook faster in the oven. Uh, we cut up the potatoes. We did not peel them. Uh, the, the skin is good, that's where uh, most of the nutrients for a potato are, and it, it makes a little color for the potato salad as well. Yeah, I was going to get the Yukon Gold, but these look so pretty. They, they are. I, I like the red skins. They're very good. And I thought, you know, with a meat dish. All right, uh, sir. The, the smaller the potato, the faster it cooks. And the less you have to cut it. Now, I just kind of tossed these potatoes around so they can deal with, oops, Deal with the, uh, the garlic that was in there. I don't know where it went. Now we're going to cover this with some plastic wrap. Oh. 
and pop it in the microwave. That will take less time than boiling all the potatoes. We cut it up small. If you wanted to, to do something uh, uh, with that, uh, you could, could uh, boil them as well. The smaller sizes will, will help it to cook faster, and that's what it's all about. I would salt the water just a tad, uh, give it a little more tang. Uh, you could use sea salt, or Connie has some, some uh, fantastic salts, flavored salts, in, uh, in the famous uh, cupboard. In the pantry. All right, how long do you want this in for? Okay, uh, I don't know. The length of time depends on how, how many potatoes you've got. Let's try uh, three minutes. <laughs> I have to make a decision. Mm. So we got a quick second here. I've got wine dinners coming up. I have one coming up on March 25th. We ended up having to cancel Valentine's Day. First, a whole bunch of people got Excuse the me. Point. It wasn't actually canceled, no. but the event here was canceled. Here so was you canceled. didn't waste your money. Right. So a bunch of people got the flu to the point where it was just too many people. So then I went ahead and canceled. Then I got a call the next day from a whole different group, so then we put it back on. Yay. I've been calling Dean back and forth. And then this, all that snow and stuff hit. And I said, I just don't know what the roads are going to look like, so we ended up having to cancel the event. But I moved the menu to March 25th. So that's ah. going to be the... It's like a sour cherry theme. You know, I always pick one flavor and go with it. And there's going to be pork tenderloin and different stuff like that. So um, I'm looking forward to it. Give me a call, 248-933-4579, if you want to make reservations or get details. The, 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 uh, the dinners here are amazing. The wine in the woods, the, uh, the beer in the woods mm -hmm. that yeah, you've had. We're going to have one. Yeah. The, uh, the tequila in the woods? Haven't yet. Okay, well, <laughs> kill's up and coming. Yep. So then this is going to be, this is going to go, with, now is that supposed to expand like that? What? Oh, it's breathing. Okay. It's, it's breathing. Okay. Yes. And, and you wanted, what's, the, what's plain yogurt? Is that part of the dressing? Yes. Uh, after we toss the, the uh, cooked potatoes with a little bit of uh, cider vinegar or any type of vinegar that you'd like, um, keeping in mind the other seasonings you want to put in, um, we let that soak in. We don't want any liquid vinegar in the bottom of the bowl. If there is, just you know, put a paper towel down there and soak it up. Then we take either yogurt or sour cream or creme fraiche and put a dollop or two in, toss it around. We don't want the potatoes swimming around in that, but we would like the potatoes uh, to have a light to medium coat okay. of that. And again, Creaminous. if they're hot, they, they grab, the, they grab yes. the moisture so much more quickly. Yes. So, and then we're going to build a salad. We are going to build a salad. That'll be wonderful. I've got everything mm -hmm. washed and ready for you. Okay, fantastic. And we also, I was talking about upcoming stuff. Our shearing dates are set for May 14th and 15th, where we will shear all the alpacas next door at Always a Coyo, and you can buy the fiber right off the animal. And we have lunch in here, and I have a van going back and forth. You can come both days. You can come stay all day. You can come for an hour, do whatever you want to do. We had some people last year that came and stayed for the whole day. They mm -hmm. so enjoyed it. And our shearers, I've talked about Matt and Katie, they just create a such a safe atmosphere for the alpacas that it's not nearly as traumatic as, as it once was. So that's May 14th and 15th. Again, you can call me and get set up. And if you want to just, you want to come for the day or whatever, we do serve a luncheon and then that's $25 for the day, basically. And uh, it just offsets some of our shearing costs. And really, that's a bargain when, when you have some of the food here. It's Aww, fantastic. Thank you. Well, I have to cook anyway because I have to feed the barn crew. Okay. So that's why I kind of expanded it into a luncheon. Mm -hmm. So. So at some point, I'll start to serve lunch, and then I'll leave and disappear because I'm over at the barn serving lunch. Okay. <laughs> so. Fantastic. I like having it assisted. It's absolutely fantastic. Bull's a little hot. So you're going to fork check these? Yes. Okay. <laughs> a little bit more. All right. Well, they'll probably be out of the microwave by the time we come back. Okay. So that's some of the stuff. We got a group coming up this weekend. Um, two of the ladies used to come up here regularly with Joan Sheridan from Heritage. Nope. And they're coming up to spend the day on Saturday. And they want a chocolate themed day. Oh, 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 All right, so oh. I'm gonna pop these back in for a minute. That sounds good. All right, we'll get you back here in about a minute. The potatoes will be out, the meatloaves will be out. We'll build a salad, okay? Fantastic. So Planning a dinner party? Figure out how much food you need with the Guestimator at SaveTheFood.com. It's not just a donation. It's a warm blanket. It's a bottle of clean water. It's a roof and a bed. It's knowing someone cares. 
It's feeling safe. Is a today that's better than yesterday. Every dollar you can spare helps so much more than you can imagine. Please donate now to Red Cross Disaster Relief. Your help is urgently needed. Hi everyone, I'm Bill Lansdowne, retired chief of the San Diego Police Department. The first step to protecting your smartphone is to add a simple passcode lock on your phone. It's an important first line of defense. For most iOS devices, such as iPads, iPhones, and iPod Touch, follow these simple steps. Tap settings. Tap passcode lock. Tap turn passcode on. Enter in a four digit password. Re-enter to confirm password. For iPhone 5 devices, you have the option to set a fingerprint passcode. These are highly effective phone locks. These steps are as follows. Tap settings. Tap touch ID and password. Here you will have the option to add your fingerprint as a touch ID lock. Tap finger one and the phone will instruct you how to add your fingerprint as a lock. You also have the option to use a simple passcode as well. Either will work to access your phone. To add a simple passcode, scroll down on the same screen and find simple password. Slide right to turn it on. The phone will then prompt you to enter a four digit code. Re-enter the four digit code to confirm. And we're back. You've got your potatoes. I'm going to start doing this together for okay, your instructions, and then you can explain what I do. Okay. Okay, so take it. In the meantime, the potatoes have come out of the microwave. They are ready. I fork tested them. They're good. So they're still warm. Zesting will change your life. They will. It'll make the kitchen smell good. Mm -hmm. So open your vinegar, apple cider, white, rice wine, uh, any kind of vinegar you'd like. But again, remember what else you're going to add for flavor. Cider vinegar is best for German potato salad. Yeah. So I just held my thumb over the top and I'm sprinkling it on. I'm going to do this in several stages. Drizzling as it were. Drizzling. Well, that's a perfect example of you can't take it out once it's in there. Right. That's I also... Wise, wise words from Connie's kitchen. I also don't want to uh, create a pool of vinegar down there. I just want the potatoes to soak in what they can take. And you don't have to put in a lot, just uh, whatever you're comfortable with taste-wise. Um, oh, I can smell that. Yeah. Oh, that smells good. It's quite aromatic standing over the steam of the potatoes coming up, bringing the vinegar with it. And that little hint of garlic. Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I think that's all I'm going to do. Half a tomato or a whole tomato? Um, I do half in that, please. See how well I take instructions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you should see her off camera. <laughs> All right, so vinegar's in. Now I'm going to add some spices. Add what you like. Uh, this Fox Point is a uh, uh, little onion, little uh, green onion. It's got some uh, shallots uh, and garlic in there. Smells and green peppercorns. And so. I'm going to use avocado oil instead of olive oil and salad. And then we'll take the meatloaf out. Oh my god, that smells good. Oh, <laughs> oh that, that onion is just rising out of there. The warm it's, potatoes make the difference. It's, and it's going to just grab that flavor just a tad yeah. bit more. Mm -hmm. When he goes to leave today, he's going to notice some of his things are missing. Because you brought those, which is very cool. What's that one now? Now, I like this. And uh, uh, Chris, we've got some smoked Spanish-style paprika here. So this will be fun. I know you like it. And that's what I'm going to check for first in my bag before I leave. <laughs> I'm just going to put a little sprinkle on there. I don't want that smoke flavor to overpower everything else. But I think the red will be nice. Once we add, in this case, some plain yogurt. This is French plain yogurt. It is. Oh, oh, oui. C'est bon. Yeah. I like that. And we tasted a little bit when we opened it. It's thicker and it's got more of a texture to it. And it's got a nice mm -hmm. flavor. 
as with the vinegar, I'm just adding a little bit at a time. And that will help carry the flavors. Because I'm big on carrying flavors through a meal. And since you put the cheese in the meatloaf muffins, I'm going to put some on here. Just a little bit of vinegar. I like it to be a little creamy. Oh, that looks good. <laughs> now, I would prepare this so I could serve it warm. Uh, that would be a traditional German style, although we varied the recipe a whole lot. Uh, not that we follow recipes. Um, but the next day, if there's any left over, sure, yeah, have it cold right out of the fridge. That'll be good. In fact, it'll probably be uh, a little bit different taste-wise, uh, not having the heat, uh, but letting those flavors mingle overnight. So, we've got our potato salad. Not even going to wait till we put it all together and plate mm. it. Mm. Well, we might run out of time, and I want to taste it. Oh, okay. And the salad... Was it a, well, you, I got my mouth full. You talk. <laughs> Salad, any sort of favorite greens, uh, romaine, not iceberg lettuce. Uh, you could use Napa cabbage if you want. Whatever greens you like, uh, toss it in there. If you want to throw a handful of fresh herbs in there, uh, that's great. Any sort of cheese that you want, grated, fresh grated. We don't want anything pre-grated because it has <laughs> pine essence in it. <laughs> this, this stuff that makes it not stick together. That's right. um, drizzle olive oil or avocado oil or whatever flav favorite flavored oil you have over there. Three times fast. I can't. I know. And I didn't have wine yet. <laughs> uh, squeeze some lemon juice over the top. Uh, 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 use the microplane for some, some zest. Uh, you want to go with a Mexican themed dinner? Yeah, use, use another citrus fruit. Use a lime in there. Um, thanks to, to my sister Claire Birchall in Connecticut uh, who, who does this all the time with uh, olive oil, lemon juice, and some zest. A little salt and pepper. We can throw a little salt in there if we want. Salt potato. Okay. These, I think, are going to be too hot for us to taste. Oh, here, do you want to put that hot pad on your cutting board? I'll sure. set this over there. Yep. You want a plate? Yes, please. All right. Excuse me. Talking to the unicorns. The All unicorns right. Unicorns are everywhere. They are. Okay, now when we made the meatloaf muffins, we put the cheese in. If you would prefer, take care of, leave the cheese out, uh, bake them in the oven, and just before the meat is done, sprinkle the cheese on top. But for me, that's just a little extra cleanup that I would rather not do. Mm -hmm. We already have to clean my oven. <laughs> this was not in the contract. Okay. Have read the fine print, my friend. Dang. Oh, okay. And I grabbed a couple of forks because we're both going to taste. Yes. And, and Kyle, too, once he's finished, he does he's such a great job for us. He's playing with the unicorns right now. Oh, he is. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Fresh forks. Oh. I'll, I'll hold that. Thank you. Oh. It's done through nice. Yep. Smells wonderful. That was about uh, 40 minutes? Mm-mm. No? Like 24. Oh, 24. Mm-hmm. Which reminds me. Oh, well, that's good. Mm-mm-mm. Potato salad, all for me. That worked well. This is great. Something like this, the way we seasoned it, no ketchup. No, um, don't need it. No. But we got to wrap it up. See, I told you we're going to run out of time. Okay. But we're going to be back because we're going to shoot another episode today where I'm going to do some fun and creative things to you. So, till next time. Thanks for coming back to the kitchen. Thank you for coming back to the kitchen. Remember the promise, and we'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>